Hello everybody, my name is Connie from Minerva and today I have a sew along for you of the jumpsuit that I'm currently wearing. So this is the jumpsuit from McCall's pattern number 7864. This pattern comes in four different variations. You've got two dresses and two jumpsuits. So I've chosen to do pattern variation C, which is the jumpsuit with a halter neck. But if you wanted a little bit more coverage, you can do D, which has a little frill around the collar. Or if you wanted the dress options, we've got the frill with the longer the length or the frill with the shorter length. So this pattern is described by McCall's as being easy, which I would say it definitely is. However, it is made of a stretch knit material. So if this is kind of your first time using stretch, I wouldn't choose this pattern just because you do have things like a zip. And for the variation like I did, you do have a lining around the top, which not only gives the garment some structural integrity, but also serves to finish off the top edge. Now, as shown at the back of this pattern, you can make this outfit in a variety of different fabrics. So on the back, it says that you can use moderate stretch knits. So for example, sequined knit, velvet knits, interlock, jersey, and the lining has to be a trico. Other than this, you'll also need elastic, bias tape if making some of the variations, and also an invisible jersey zipper. However, I didn't actually use mine, but I will speak to this a little bit more as this sew along starts. Just before we properly begin, if you do have any questions that come up during the video, you can actually pop them down below in the comment section and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Also, if you like any of the materials I'm using or you just want to make this pattern, as I'm talking, there will be pop-ups on the screen to the products that I'm talking about so you can click through and buy them through Minerva. I believe that's everything so we can now begin the sew along. Okay, so the first things first is having a look at our pattern. So this is the pattern here, and I've decided that I'm going to do variation C, which is the sleeveless jumpsuit. And then on the back, it has all of the sizing information and also all of the information about what kind of fabrics that you'll need and any notions. So I'm going to be doing a size 10, just for reference. And also on the back here, we can see what kind of fabric we need. So the suggested fabrics are a moderate stretch knit, 35% cross grain wise and you can actually test the stretch of your fabric on this handy little graph here. We also need some notions so I've got all of mine here. I've got some matching coloured um, elastic that which matches my fabric here. So this is my fabric, a lovely bright orange knit with a little bit of stretch to it. I've also got my lining fabric here just a slightly dark orange and quite slippy and also with stretch. I have then got my invisible zipper there. My bias tape. And some hooks and eyes. Once you've got all of your equipment, the first thing that you really need to do is cut out your pattern. Now I've actually already done this, so I've cut out a size 10 and I'm doing variation C. But just to make sure that I've definitely got all of the right pieces, you can actually look on your pattern instruction leaflet at this section here where it says jumpsuit C, and this gives you a kind of pattern layout for when you're cutting out the fabric, and also you can check off to make sure that you've definitely cut all of the right pieces out. So my next step is actually to lay my fabric out just like this, and then cut out all of my pieces, remembering all of the notches and things like that. Now one thing to note about this pattern is that online I've seen several people actually omit various sections of it. So for example, some people have taken out the centre back zip and also taken out the lining. So I'm actually going to attempt this pattern taking out the centre back zip and I'll show you how to do that just because I think it will look a little bit smoother in the back section without a zip being there and the fabric that I've chosen has enough stretch in it to do without it. The first thing I did for this pattern was to cut out all of the pieces making sure to include the notches and then putting on any markings I needed in a contrasting coloured chalk pencil so I did mine in white. You'll also need to cut out your lining pieces in the exact same way. Now moving on to the instructions, the first instruction is to pin the bodice front sections together at the centre front. So we've got the bodice front section here and we're actually stitching and leaving open above the large circle. So we've got a large circle here. So we're just stitching up to that and then leaving the top part open. 
and I'm actually also going to overlock the edges before I actually sew them together just so that it's nice and neat and there's no raw edges showing. So the first thing I'll be doing is overlocking and then sewing down with my jersey needle. Now we are doing the exact same thing but with the back piece, so I've caught my back piece here which is piece 2 and I'm going to be overlocking along each of these edges and each of these edges and then sewing the back to the front pieces just at the sides, just as we did with the front. Next we are taking our shoulder straps and what we're going to be doing is removing the pins and with each piece we're actually going to fold it on this fold line which is this one along here just like that right sides together and actually sew along the edge 1.5 centimeters and trim that edge so there's not an excess or overlock it which is what I'll do just so it's nice and secure. After that you'll need to turn the strap inside out so that it's facing the right way. Give it a quick iron and then baste the edges on either end 1.5 centimeters in. So now that we've basted and ironed both of our shoulder strap sections we're going to just pin them and then baste them into place on our shoulder straps just between the two dots that we've created. Just like that. Now exactly as we did with the front and back sections of the main bodice section, we're going to do the exact same with the lining. So the first thing is to sew the two front pieces together, the centre front here, up to where the dot is. Then we are going to sew the front and back together at the side here, just as we did before. Next we're going to be attaching the lining to the main fabric, so I've got them right sides together, so there's our main bodice, and here is our lining. And what we're going to be doing is pinning all around the outside on all of the key places, and then we're going to be sewing around that as well at our 5cm seam allowance, and when we actually get to this sort of slit in the front we're just going to pivot. So we'll go down with our sewing machine, stop here lift the foot up, turn the fabric around so that it's very sharp sort of V angle there and then sew up the other side. So firstly I'm just going to pin this all down. Now that we've done that I've actually just flipped it around so you can see how that's looking as an actual sort of bodice now but what we're next going to do is turn it the wrong way around again and we are going to trim along where we've just done and then we're going to actually understitch so if you were unsure as to what understitching actually was you do have your glossary in your pattern so understitching is described here as opening out the facing or underside of the garment, stitching to the seam allowance close to the hem. So this is just going to ensure that when the garment is the right way around, that it doesn't sort of flip so that the lining is showing from the outer side because we're actually trapping the fabric sort of on the inner edge like that. So first things first is trimming. Okay, now that I've trimmed that, you can see I haven't gone too crazy with the trimming, just enough to sort of take out the bulk, but you don't actually want to go too short because you need a bit of fabric there in the seam allowance for the understitching. 
So the understitching, as I said before, is just to keep the lining in its place. So what I'm going to do is with the fabric facing the right side towards me, I'm going to sew very closely along here on the lining side, trapping that seam allowance along with the lining so that the lining is physically pulled to the inside when you're wearing the garment. So I'm just going to go along with my machine, going like that. And being careful not to pull too much because obviously this fabric is elastic and you don't want there to be any strange warping. Okay, so now I've actually just ironed up. So you can see there, there's my top stitching. I did kind of as far as I could go all around here and sort of stopped at this top section because it gets a little bit steep, but I've just ironed all of that down. And our next thing to do is have a look at our pattern piece for the bodice back. And just to remind ourselves of where that stitching line is, because we are going to do a stitching line along here for our elastic. So what I'm actually gonna do is just take my blue pen and just mark on either end and maybe in the middle, just to remind myself of where the stitching line is and then I will be stitching that into place. Next we're on to step 17. So for this I've actually cut my elastic already. So I've got them both here. And what I've actually done is just marked on each end 1.5 centimeters from the edge because when we are going to put the elastic in, on this inner sort of side here, we are going to be extending the elastic 1.5 centimeters. So I'm just going to take one of the pieces and thread it in. And what we're gonna do is have this piece inside extending 1.5 centimeters and I might pin that there just to make sure and this other end reaching the center back like that and then once we've sort of got that in place we are going to actually just baste those two edges in place and you see there's a little bit of a stretch so when the top sort of comes back to normal there will be a little bit of a gather there. After you've inserted the elastic through the casing, you want to extend the side seam end 1.5 centimetres and then pin that down and then have the remaining end even with the centre back and pin that down as well. After you've done that, you can then base the ends and stitch across the elastic along the side seam as I'm doing here just to secure it all down. Next, you can pull out the end of the elastic and trim very close to the stitching. Okay, so now that we've sorted out the elastic, the next thing that we're going to do is go around the entire side and all along the bottom edges and then back up the other side and a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance to kind of finish the bodice section off. Now we can move on to the leg section. So I've got my front and back legs here. This is just one pair, of course. And what we're going to be doing is, as it says in these instructions here, so we're doing pants C and D, so you kind of skip all of this section here, is that we're stitching the trousers front and back together at the inner leg in a du double stitched seam. However, because I'm overlocking, I'm not going to be doing the double stitch. I'll just do a normal stitch and then I'll overlock the two together and then press towards the back. So we're going to be doing them at the inner leg, which is this section here, so you, so you can see the crotch is there, and then the inner leg section is here. So I'm just going to line them up and pin them together and then get sewing. Next we are doing pretty much the same thing but to the crotch seam so just stitching around there and then overlocking and then once we've done that we will do this exact same thing to the side seams. Now with this crotch opening you would normally if you were doing the zip stop um, at around your big circle point however because I'm not doing the zip I don't need to do that and I can just sew the entire thing up 
and then just iron that to the side. So I'm going to do that and then I'll be doing the exact same thing to the side seams of the trousers. I then stitched the front and back trousers along the side seams and overlocked too. Okay, so now I've fully done the trousers and what you want to do is just lay them to the side and make sure, very importantly, that you know which is the front and the back. So I can tell the back is here because I have the marking from earlier, which I didn't actually need, but just make sure that you know, otherwise that would be a very annoying mistake. And then what I'm going to do is take the front of my bodice and when it's ready I'm going to be lining it up and sewing all around the bottom however firstly I need to pin sew and overlock the back seam and also overlock around the bottom and then I can begin to sew onto the trousers so I'm firstly just going to pin this side seam edge here and then overlock it Once I'd done that, I could sew the back closed and then matching all of the seams, I sewed the bodice to the trousers. Now, one of the two final things that I'm going to do for this jumpsuit is just roll up the hem 1.5 centimetres, iron it down and then sew that all the way around. I'm also just going to give it all overall a good iron to push it into shape. And then to finish off, I'm going to take my straps, which I've done here, and if you remember the last thing that we did with the straps was just to baste them into place but what I'm actually going to do is tuck in the raw edges like this tuck them all fully in so that you can't see them and roll them in a little bit neater than that but you get the idea and then I'm going to take with my it's just a hand sewing needle and my thread and just darn them into place so that you can't see any visible stitches from the outside Now that's actually the end of this video but thank you so much for watching if you got this far and if you would like to see any more sew alongs, pattern hauls, fabric hauls, you kind of name it, then you can actually follow those all along by clicking above next to where it says Minerva to keep you sort of up to date with any new videos that we're putting out. And if you do end up making this jumpsuit or any of its variations, I would love to see it. And if you sign up for Minerva, you can create a free account where you can upload pictures of your makes and kind of integrate yourself within our sewing community here. This way I can see what you've made and others can also interact with you. Don't forget to leave any comments or questions you have below. And until next time, I'll say bye.